Hey guys, it's Phil coming back at you with another video. Today, I'm back. I'm excited. I'm pumped up. Hopefully, everyone's doing well, practicing self care, doing the next right thing, building themselves up to become the best possible version of themselves, not letting one thought, one situation, one person take you outside of what you know to be true, not letting your own self doubt, not letting the doubt of in your environment, not letting the heat of the moment take you out and let it burn you to your core. I don't know exactly 44 people did just that since my last video two weeks ago because that's how many people went into the exam, kicked it directly in the chest to get the job done. And it's amazing because a lot of people on this list were like, Phil, I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to be taking this. I've been going through adversity. This other program told me that I should give up. I'm wondering if I should reschedule my exam. And I was like, keep on pushing because the only thing that dictates whether you pass or fail is the actual exam. But let's see the 44 people that passed since my last video. And they are as follows. Tina S, Audra M, Sabrina A, B F. Juju, Anthony J, Kayla F, Haley M, Finesse L, Sam C, Angelica R, Jen H, Chanel G, Jessica C, Laura W, Juan V, Myrna H, Jen P, Myra M, JP, Rebecca C, Mark O, Megan C, Maria P, Ice M, Christine M, Nala M, Teresa F, Trinity H, Casey B, Juliana C, Lydia O, Stephanie C, Holly A, Amelia D, Alicia T, Leslie D, Michelle S, Cal, Krista B, Angela B, Jasmine H, Pamela F, and Matt E. Ah, I'm so excited, man, because so many people on that list, like I said, were like, Bill, I'm not sure if I can get this done. I'm doubting myself. I'm not sure if I've even built to be a social worker. I've failed the exam in the past. I'm getting these questions wrong. Should I give up? And the advice is always to keep pushing, to keep pushing, to keep pushing, to keep pushing, and keep driving, and keep striving. To become the best possible version of yourself because it may not be on your timeline, but you have to keep going. You have to keep going. You have to keep going. And if you're like, Phil, I want to rep and rock with you as well. I'm not sure what that looks like. I did, I'm new to you or man, I'm not really sure because I'm getting my butt kicked or information's not making a lot of sense to me. Well, the easiest way to be able to do that is to get into my Sunday study groups from 7 p.m. Eastern time until whenever, and I say whenever because they end when they end. And what I mean by that is the one-day course last Saturday went until 1.30 in the morning because I wanted to make sure that everybody got their questions answered and they felt comfortable and confident in their abilities. In my study groups, they just keep going until everybody gets their question answered because it makes me angry when people are like, well, yeah, this person cut me off earlier. Man, I'm not really even sure if what I'm doing is right because I'm not going to do that to you guys. So if you want to get in my Sunday study groups, they are paid groups from 7 p.m. Eastern time until whenever the next ones are as follows. 1010 practice questions. And if you've been in my practice question sessions before, do not come into the session. Do not come into the session expecting to kick them directly in the chest. Why? Because of the way that I construct my questions. Yes, I construct my own questions. I don't utilize anyone else's questions are implemented to be difficult to ensure that you're able to break it down, not add anything, not second guess yourself and not twist yourself around. So you're not going to be able to take a shortcut to get this answer to the questions and why I do this because a lot of times people say, Phil, do you hate us? Do you want us to fail? Your questions are so difficult. No, I'd rather have you go through a difficult question now than get into the exam and see a ton of difficult questions and feel confused because that happens to a lot of people. So I'm going to be putting my heart into these questions. So be prepared if you attend that session to be tripped up. The next one after that is 1017 human developmental theory. So going through different human developmental theories, as well as going through practice questions, because the goal is never to memorize any information, but be able to recognize and apply it inside of questions. 1024, the defense mechanisms, 1031, client interventions, 117, community interventions, 1114, acronym and practice questions. So going through each level of the acronym and going through 10 practice questions to ensure that you're able to not just memorize, not just jump to conclusions and take a shortcut, but be able to hop yourself back in and be able to break these things down. Because again, the practice questions I create are built to make you think and push yourself to the next level, not just feel good. Of course, we want you to feel good, but we want you to be able to go into the exam, destroy it and not get destroyed. 1121 ethics, 
11, 28, DSM-5 adults and medications, and 12, 5 practice questions. And the practice questions that will be in the 10, 10 session are different than will be in the 11, 14 and different than will be in the 12, 5 because I do not want you to be like, oh my God, should I not attend the session based on the fact that I've been in a previous session of his before? Absolutely not. Based on the fact that I want to make sure that you're getting new questions and getting new lessons from each of these different sessions in all the different sessions that I have. I'll go over different practice questions, but the practice questions on 1010, the practice questions on 1114, and the practice questions on 125 are mostly going to be application and reasoning questions. So if you find yourself getting twisted on those, those are the sessions you're likely wanting to get in. And if you're like, Bill, how in the heck do I join those sessions? You can send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com or click the link down below in the description. It'll send you to my calendar. You'll have to hit your time zone because that's a sticking point for a decent amount of people. So hit your time zone. You'll be able to pick whatever session you want to go to and you have to select each session individually as well as if you're not able to attend the session live, it's 100% possible to sign up for the session, be sent the recording to review at your own convenience and pace As well as, I do still offer individual tutoring. My schedule is still hairy. I thought I added enough slots to ensure that I can get everybody in. But my schedule still books out about four weeks in advance. So if your exams prior to that, you can send me an email at berda24 at gmail.com or click the link down below in the description. But if your exam is sooner than four weeks, you'll have to send me an email. I'll put you on the individual tutoring waiting list. But if you're like, Phil, I want to get a session with you. I'm panicking. I'm not really sure what I can particularly do. The best alternative that I can really offer is the previously recorded one day course. So if you were not able to attend the session on 10-2, then it's 100% possible to get the recording. Why I recommend that is because it gives you all the strategies and techniques that I would recommend for people to utilize breaking down the questions as well as Put you through 25 difficult practice questions and the people that were in that session were like, holy smokes, I've never seen a question like this before or man, these questions are really, really tough and it, it, it's not built to make you beat up on yourself, but it's to understand where you're coming from and how you particularly can get there in order to become the next and best possible version of yourself. And I say the next version of yourself because a lot of times we have to upgrade ourselves and shed off this exterior stuff that we previously were in order to focus and be the best possible version currently. The things we've done in our past, we need to get past those things in order to empower ourselves to the next level. As well as, for those that do not know, Audible has continued to partner with me on my YouTube videos and my podcast. So if you want to support me as well as support them, go to my Audible affiliate link at audibletrial.com slash fill in the gaps, sign up for the 30 day free trial. It's the easiest way to be able to support me. It costs you absolutely nothing. Again, go to my Audible affiliate link at audibletrial.com slash fill in the gaps, sign up for the 30 day free trial, get a free book. And for those that do not know, Audible is an easy way to get information on the go. So if you're busy just like me and you still want to gain knowledge and get information as much as you possibly can, but your schedule does not condone it, Audible is an easy way to be able to do so. And it helps me become the best possible version of myself because reading is very difficult for me because I'm more of an auditory learner. So if you get information in that way as well, Audible is an easy way to be able to do that. Again, if you want to support me as well as support them, go to my Audible affiliate link at audibletrial.com slash fill in the gaps, sign up for the 30 day free trial and then get yourself a free book. And if you're like, Bill, I'm not really sure what book I should get, but I still want to rep and rock with you. I still want to get the free book by signing up on the Audible affiliate link. Well, there are a couple of books that I would recommend. There are a couple and they are as follows. The Alchemist, The Archer, The Power of Habit, as well as Outliers. Each of them have different information and pieces of nuggets that you can take with you, not to just progress personally, but also professionally in the best possible way that you can. Again, I appreciate every single person that has done that. It's blown my mind how many people in the Fill in the Gaps community are repping and rock with me. If you want to rock with me in a different way, I have revived the podcast as I promised. So if you did not know, I have a podcast. You can look it up on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify at Fill in the Gaps. And if you have not already and you find my videos helpful, please hit the thumbs up button down below because it helps amazing social workers just like you 
by my videos as well. And if you haven't already, please click the subscribe button down below as well as click the bell notification next to it because it will give you an email every time I upload a video. And it's amazing how many people do that as well as do me a favor and drop a positive comment down below because you don't know how many people have done so and how many people read them especially me when i'm like going through it i'm like man are these videos actually helping people or what's going on and i just look down and read those comments and they really really help me to become the best possible version of myself as well as give me ways to improve as well as to encourage me and give me as much energy as i possibly can and there's like pieces of things that i was thinking about before this video i was like man People have been going through it, man. People have really been going through it. I've been getting emails about a lot of tragedies and a lot of hardships people are going through while preparing for this exam. And it's heavy, man. Like one of the emails that stuck out to me that really, really hit me. And I was, I was like, whoa. Where somebody was like, man, Phil, um, I was getting ready to prepare for my exam. And my I was taking care of my mom. She She was dying. And then I promised her that I would, I would pass this exam before she passed away. And she passed away. But in, before then, I wasn't repping a rock with you, man. I was struggling. I really wasn't sure how I was going to get this exam done. And then one of my good friends was like, man, I really think you should check this Phil Cat out on YouTube. And, and, and study his energy and his vibe and his style could work for you. Then she looks up the videos and starts studying and starts feeling good about where she's coming from. And then in the in that email, she's like, yo, my friend died before I was able to go into the exam. I was like, wow, what? So you're telling me that your mom passed away. Your friend tells you about me. They pass away. And then you go into the exam and kick it directly in the chest to get the job done. I was thinking, what type of dedication and energy and do you have to have in order to do that? And then another person was like, yo, man, I'm going through it like somebody murdered this individual that was very close to me and and I'm still preparing for this exam the 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 word that came to me cuz I was like man this is so heavy like how how is the world going through such tragedy man like and and, and you always see it you know but you don't recognize it until it touches touches home because I I I believe that you guys are all family at, at some capacity to me because you guys are repping rock with me you guys are connecting with me you guys are trusting me I'm trusting you and it, it's it just hit me heavy i was like man so what what do i need to share with this community right now because because we're all going through it and, and the word that came to me was was grateful i was like what why is that word hit me i was like man i'm just grateful for the opportunity to be a part part of this and i feel like people are just grateful for the opportunity because a lot of times people don't have a sense of gratitude or, or feel grateful for the situations that they're in until they're at risk of losing something or they've lost something or their back's up against the wall and, and they really have to start really thinking about all the things that are important to them. And I was like, man, why is this word sticking out to me? Like, because I, I as I'm, before I'm recording videos, I'm like, man, what is the best possible thing that you can say to these, these individuals that are going into the exam or people that are struggling right now, right now? Like, what message can you share? Like, what's on your heart right now? Or, or where, where can you, where can you take them? Because you, you can't just keep doing the same things over and over and over. So then I was like, okay, let me Google this because this word didn't just come into my mind by mistake. And, and grateful for those that do not know is feeling or showing an appreciation or kindness being thankful. I was like, okay, so why would somebody that's going through such tragedy have such gratitude or, or why should they be grateful for the opportunity? And, and I was thinking about it. Okay, well, look at the word a little bit closer. And, and the word rate came out. The word rate, R-A-T-E. So grateful has the word rate in it. And I was like, okay, so what does that mean? The word rate means assign a standard of value to something according to a particular scale. I was like, what is the message? Tell me the dang message so I can share it directly because I, I, I can't interpret this. And I was like, that's it. That is that is totally it. it. It came to me. I was like, the individuals that succeed or do not succeed is based on the rate that they're giving themselves. What rating are you rating yourself at? And what that means is a lot of times people are like, Phil, I, I don't think I can really do this or this person's telling me I should back out or I shouldn't believe in myself or man, I'm overworking myself or I'm doing too much for this other individual or I'm helping other people pass the exam but I can't particularly get the job done. 
And I just want to always tell them, just be grateful for the opportunity to have the heartbeat in your chest to get the job done. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't feel the way that you're feeling, but what you should do is start rating yourself on a scale that actually makes sense. You are rating yourself on a scale that is so hard for you to obtain that it's not even the particular rating that you need to be giving yourself. So in order to have some gratitude in the situation, you are rating that situation as an opportunity for or an opportunity that you wouldn't have gotten before. It's not just an option anymore. It's not a choice anymore. So a lot of times when you are taking this exam or doubting yourself or being like, man, I really can't get the job done, you're rating yourself at the wrong rating and you need to be more objective and you're too close to yourself to actually give yourself credit for the opportunities and situations you've been doing. You're too uniquely gifted and talented to be rating yourself on somebody else's scale. You have to look at yourself in the face and say, I'm doing everything that I possibly can. I don't have to be that other individual. I don't have to do the everything else that my friends and everybody else is doing. You need to just be grateful for the opportunity and situation that you're in because you know dang well if somebody else was in your opportunity or situation, you would be building them up. You would be telling them the things that you want to hear in your own ear, but you're so close to yourself that you're like, I can spread the joy. I can spread the positivity, but when it comes to me, I have to be a leader, but most leaders are not better than the people that are following them. They are orchestrating and telling people inside of themselves, I see something inside of you that you do not see, and you're orchestrating that in other people, but when it comes to you, you're so busy focusing on them that you're robbing yourself of the opportunity and joy that you need. You're acting like the people that came before you would not want the best for you. The people that came before you are orchestrating the things inside of you, but you're too busy giving away your plays and all these different notes and all this different energy to other people that when it comes to you, you're not feeling grateful for the opportunities anymore because your rating for you is way different. You're mad when people succeed or you're mad at yourself when you're not doing the things that came easy to you before. You have to be so locked and loaded at this situation. There are too many people suffering right now, man. So many people going through tragedy. People are people are going through it. Because there are a lot of people that that aren't here anymore that they want to be in the opportunities that you're in. They want to have the ability to fail the exam and be able to lock and load and be able to reflect and do everything. They're not here anymore. So you have to start living just for you, but also for them. You have to be thinking about what is my move and how is the way that I'm talking to myself or how is the way that I'm orchestrating myself impacting the people that came before me or the people that are going to come after me and that's why a lot of times people ask me like phil why do you always try to why do you always try to ask anything outside of this exam and and i always tell people this exam isn't an exam this exam is to examine your psyche as well as your ability to operate and delegate under stress your way of reacting under stress is going to be exploited by this exam And what I mean by that is a lot of times people will start rating themselves based on who they were before. They're forgetting that they've upgraded their situation. They're forgetting that they've changed their situation. And they're forgetting they have more strategies and techniques. But they've also had this guise on that if I have more strategies and techniques within my situation, that I'm going to be better off. I would rather have somebody have one strategy and do it a thousand times and fail a thousand times than to try a thousand strategies and still fail a thousand times. I would rather have somebody do one strategy and fail a thousand times than somebody do a thousand strategies and fail a thousand times. Because it's still failing a thousand times, but the person that fails doing a thousand strategies is not going to be as comfortable and confident in their ability. But it's the person that's willing to execute at the exact level that they knew that they were supposed to be doing from the beginning and doing it over and 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 over Then the person that's like, man, I need to switch it up. I need to be doing all these different things. Because again, those people that have passed repping and rock with me know darn well that it wasn't because they did a thousand different strategies. It was because they looked inside of themselves and said, what am I grateful for? Who am I doing this for? What do I need to do? What do I need to do to build myself up? I'm done building other people up. That doesn't mean that people that are repping with the fill in the gaps community aren't helping people. We're helping as many people as we possibly can, but we know that we need to be helping ourselves first, recharging ourselves first. We need to be doing self-care first. We need to be doing the next level. We need to be doing our studying. We need to be doing our practice questions. We need to be doing everything that we know that we're supposed to be doing in order to get ourselves on a good rating scale that meshes well with us. We need to be no longer 
comparing ourselves to other people. We need to be no longer looking at what somebody else is doing. We no longer need to be buying things that we know that we're not supposed to be buying. We need to be no longer degrading ourselves based on things that aren't actually inside of the actual exam. Let me say that again. We need to be no longer degrading ourselves for things that are outside of the actual exam because the only thing that dictates whether you pass or fail is the actual exam. So you have to be getting yourself to that moment of being grateful to get in the opportunity. Because again, it may not be where you actually want to be, but you're better than you were yesterday. You're better than you were two days ago. You're better than you were 30 days ago. You're better than 60 days ago. You're better than 90 days ago. You're going to be better tomorrow than you were today as long as you keep doing at least one thing different. That is going to be positive and that doesn't mean you have to be changing every day. That may just mean that you have to be doing the exact right thing over and over and over and over. How am I going to speed it up? Or how am I going to look at this differently? Wow, I'm getting practice questions wrong. I'm getting my butt kicked. How can I make the adaptation? View the incorrect answers as an opportunity, not a situation or a mistake because a mistake is just something that you missed and you have to take the lessons and blessings from that mistake in order to have it take you to the next level to get the opportunities that you know that you need to be on. You're rating yourself at the long, wrong level. If you have an internal clock that's saying like, man, you're not at the right time. You're not doing the right things. You're behind everybody. You should have already done this before. That is not the clock that you need to be running at because nothing is ever late. Nothing is ever going to happen late in life. The only thing that's going to happen late is when you are no longer here because everything that you were supposed to do before is now late. It's not going to get done anymore because you downplayed yourself. You were so inside of your head that it was like, man, that's that's a small mistake. I can't do this. and I need to be perfect. That perfectionistic type mentality, that's dead. That has to die. You are no longer striving to get a 4.0. You're no longer striving to get a 100%. You're you're striving to be 100% you and get that 4.0 that you know that you deserve inside of you. You need to make sure that you're trying to live another 40 years inside of you. You need to be doing all these different things in order to get the opportunities and situations that you know that you need as well as the people around you that need. Because there are people that looking at you that's like, man, I'm so glad that person never gave up because I know that I just come from the same lineage. I'm cut from the same cloth, so I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to let that tear me down. I'm not going to let any opportunity or situation scare me because I know that the person that is coming after me is doing better than I was before. I need to keep going. I need to keep driving. I need to keep striving. I need to keep getting that rating system in my head correct because I'm not going to correct myself outside of this situation that I know that I'm doing correctly. I'm not going to say I'm incorrect because I'm in the right positions and the right situations because you have to get the inside of you right before you're going to be able to get inside of the exam and get that correct. Now, hopefully that helps at least one individual that's hearing this. But again, if you haven't heard it already today, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Do not let one thought, one situation, one person take you outside. Do not give up because the only time that you're actually going to fail is when you actually hang it up and stop. The only person that fails is stopping because if you keep failing over and over and over and over and over and over and you're taking lessons and blessings from that, you've not failed. You've actually succeeded. It's just a little success that you didn't actually view as being positive. But again, your view is going to dictate dictate what you believe and what you believe is what you're going to get dictate and how you achieve it. So you have to be able to get into that situation and get in that mindset of nothing is going to stop me. I have to keep going. I have to keep striving and I have to keep driving in order to get inside of the exam to kick it directly in the chest to get the job done. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate every single one of you guys for repping and rocking with me. Words cannot express how much support that you guys have shown me. It's a, I'm grateful for every opportunity and situation. I'm grateful for every single person that watches this. I'm grateful for every single person that's in a Sunday study group. I'm grateful for every single person that signs up for an Audible free trial. I'm grateful for everybody that just shares my name. I'm grateful for every single situation and opportunity because I never know when my last video is ever going to be released. I'm never going to know my last breath is, but just know that I'm going to keep giving as much as I possibly can. I'm going to keep going until my body just collapses with you guys because I love every single one of you guys. Take care. Be safe. The rest of this video is going to be a special edition of where amazing social workers go into the exam, kick it directly in the chest to get the job done. And a lot of people faced adversity in this video. A lot of people were told like, you're not going to be able to take your exam. There are a couple people in this video that the state that they were operating in took their license from them based on the fact that they weren't informed that the process changed and then they had to fight for the life to get inside of the exam each one of them were grateful to be in the situation in order to operate at the next level hopefully you guys enjoy that take care of your guys yourself be safe again i appreciate and love every single one of you guys i'll see you guys in the next video in peace out guys 
I'm happy to report I passed after diligently following all of Phil's suggestions, his process, et cetera, for both studying content and preparing my mind. Totally. Yeah. Um, I have to say that every step that Phil told me to do, I followed. I followed it diligently, including that last week of the exam, how he tells you to prepare um, step by step. I followed it 100%. And I'm happy to report it 100% work. Not only did I pass, I needed 103 and I got 114. So, and it was, and when I was taking the exam, I, it was so hard. It was, it was like really hard, but I kept applying the principles that Phil taught me to do. And every time I got myself back into the principles and the steps that he told me to do and how to break down the questions, um, I persevered. Um, and I also, at uh, the top, of, they give you these whiteboards. And at the type of top, I, I constantly wrote out the acronym. I wrote at the top, um, client, then arrow, social worker, to remember that it starts at the client and it ends at the social worker in terms of intervention. Um, I also wrote at the top, uh, why and purpose for the acronym, not what so that I would always remember to apply the acronym for the why and the purpose, not for the what. And I constantly referred back to that at the top of the whiteboard. Um, Phil also taught me how to prepare my mind. I followed all his tips on that also, and it 100% worked. Every time I started to feel myself going rogue, I just remembered his voice, I remembered his steps, and it brought me back. Sometimes I wrote it down on the whiteboard, his tips what to do, and I took deep breaths. I did some grounding techniques to get me back and it really worked. So um, I, everything he did, I, I can suggest, at least for me, it worked really well. I followed it 100% and I had a great result and I worked really hard and it took me a long time to schedule and get the test done. I also had accommodations and that was a whole story in itself to get um, and, and I needed them um, for different disabilities and medical issues, um, but in the end, I'm happy to report I had a very positive experience thanks to Phil. And I, I know your story, but could you tell a little bit of like where it started and why you had to take the exam? Sure. So I graduated uh, my MSW in 1990 um, and I was a practicing social worker and then I wound up having children with special needs um, and I had three of them. Uh, who, they're, they're twice exceptional, so um, they have invisible needs and um, it became very overwhelming. Um, I'm also married to somebody who, who has um, ADHD, so a lot was on me. I was undiagnosed for a long time, and I had to stop working. Um, and I live in New York State, and at the time when I was licensed, I had to take an exam, and it was a CSW. And then in 2004, uh, the last every three years you have to register. And so the last time I registered at my address where I am now was in 99, and that's when my second child was born. My third child was born in 2003. And at the time, the um, rules were that if you don't renew your license, that, you know, you just don't pay and that when you're ready to renew it, you can pay again. So in 2004, New York State changed their, changed their laws to the LCSW and they grandfathered in everybody who took it, you know, who's CSW prior to that. So I never got the paperwork. In 2015, when I was ready to go back to work, I went to reactivate my license and I was told that I would have to take the exam again. So I asked what happened to my paperwork and they sent my paperwork to the address that I lived at and hadn't lived at since 1985, um, which was my parents' sold address. Um, I hadn't known it, it was an error on their part, but they didn't take any responsibility. So I said, okay, fine, I'll take the exam. I went to register for the exam and they told me that my hours and my, um, everything was invalid and I asked why. And they said, well, my supervisor wasn't in LCSW. So I said my LCSW was not in, in, in place in New York State for 12 years after I had finished my three years and I had my three years. I didn't have my R. I had my, um, I forgot the, whatever, I had the three years, not the six. Um, there was the letter next to it, um, which allowed you to get certain insurances, but not the full board. And um, they said, sorry. So my supervisor, who I'm still very good friends with after 30 something years, she had moved to California in the, in the mid 90s called New York State um, to, to vouch for me and explain the situation. And um, New York State said, sorry. And they made me do my three years over again. So I had to do my three years over again. And I had to then register for the exam. 
Uh, I had applied for accommodations. Um, I had finished my three years at the end of August of um, 2019 and right before I finished my um, I finished my hours but I wasn't ready to test until September 1st uh, August 19th of 2019 I got in a very big car accident so I have dyslexia so I should get accommodations for that but then I got a traumatic brain injury and a neck injury so I needed extra accommodations I had to apply for them three times I gave them plenty of documentation I also have asthma and, and other medical issues, and I'm not able to wear a mask for eight hours because I get double time. I'm not able to wear a mask at all. So that was a whole nother journey um, and um, in terms of accommodations. But in the end, Phil was very supportive, um, listened to me during tutoring sessions to kind of get my mind on track and keep my eye on the ball. Um, I persevered. Um, and in the end, um, you know, I did have to get some legal help, but I did, and I was very lucky uh, to get a great, great support there. I had great support from Phil. And after that crazy journey, and after graduating 30 years ago, <laughs> I'm happy to say today that I got my license back and I had no disciplinary anything. I had only a good record. Uh, so it was all red tape and, and circumstance. Um, and my daughter said to me yesterday morning at 5.30 in the morning when I had to leave, she got up to wish me luck and she just said to me mom just remember that if you don't pass you 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 lost your license because you raised three kids and whatever happens keep that in your mind and it was such a great way to start the day and so i just knew that everything was on my side and it, once my day started like that and it put me in a good mindset also um, and then i wound up to have a great reader who was really compassionate and kind and she happened to have had a stroke two years ago so in the bathroom we were talking about our own experiences and the people there, uh, you know, I would say that the, 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 the powers that be in these organizations uh, have not been kind. In fact, they've been prejudice and discriminatory and, and that had to be addressed. But I'm happy to report that the personnel that was there as well as the reader that I had were lovely, compassionate. And once they saw that I was actually a kind hearted, good person and I just was there because I had disabilities and, and I needed these things and, and I was a good person and I was kind and I was very respectful of everything that they wanted and asked or, or whatever. It just, they, it, everything passed and everybody was friendly and it was like, whatever you need, you know, it was just, it worked out great. So um, it was just a very stressful test. It was a very hard test, but I will say that, um, and I was like, wow, some of these questions. But again, every time I applied Phil's principles and his steps and his tools, uh, it worked and I was able to stay on track. I did need to use all the time. I wasn't able to check all of my answers. The time ran out. Um, but in the end also, Phil gave me the suggestion or and he gives everybody and he says, you know, once you're there, surrender. Like this is, this is where you are. This is what it is. It's 170 clients. I looked at it that way. And then at the end, when I was like afraid, when they give you the survey, I listened to Phil's voice in my head already. And it was like, again, he said, surrender. This is nothing you could do. Like it is what it is. And I did. And as soon as I surrendered, the pass came up on my screen and I started hysterical crying. So, and then the people that were there, they were clapping for me. So it was just, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a happily ever after story. And it's stories like this that remind me of why, I, why I do what I do. You know, like you, you had to go through so many, so many obstacles and adversity and as I told you in my email to you, like, wow, you, you passed. I was, I knew how long you had. And I felt like my exam was about to be done. Cause I was like, Oh my God, I haven't heard anything. Oh my good. If I don't hear anything by this date, does it mean that she didn't pass? And then I was, and then when you said you passed, I was like, this is the most amazing thing. Cause I remember during our first session, you're like, Phil, I cannot remember a whole lot or anything. And I'm not sure how you can help. And it's like, well, let's start with yeah. the building blocks and get you, to a place where you believe in yourself. And can you walk them through those last couple of days of what it felt like to have that stress on you and how you worked through that? Yeah, sure. So I'll just say in the beginning, um, you know, I'm, I'm impro I am improving from the TBI, but I still have effects. But when I started working with Phil back in January, when I thought I would be taking the test like in two months and the accommodations would go through because actually my area of, of, of specialty is in disabilities. I also have a special ed uh, background. I have uh, my New York State teaching licenses in special ed reading and elementary ed, and that's what I went into first. And then I got my master's in social work because I felt that there was a huge disconnect 
um, and I was hoping to bridge the gap. And so I've been doing this, this is my wheelhouse for like 30 years and I've, I've, I've been on the other side, helping my own children, helping hundreds of other children um, get accommodation. So this is the first time I was in the hot seat, so to speak. Um, so I did have trouble remembering and he actually really worked with me where I was at, like meeting your client where you're at, he met me where I was at and, and we figured it out from there and it was very helpful. Um, and then in the last week, um, you know, I, I booked so when I could for individual study, uh, you know, tutoring sessions. My, I, I needed a reader. Um, so my daughter's tutor uh, was kind enough to offer to proctor me and charge me like half price. So that was great. And so we did the ASWB practice exam. And like Phil says, not to see how I did, but to go through the process. And obviously I didn't finish in four hours time and they don't let you take it. But uh, my t the tutor was willing to type out the rest of the questions and we could just kept practicing, you know, and, and seeing my time and pacing me to see how I can pace myself. So, so I did that. Um, I studied, um, I took two one day courses. I started, I did all of the questions. I reviewed the notes uh, constantly that Phil, you know, um, suggested. Um, so in my every spare moment, I reviewed the steps of what to do. I reviewed the content as well. I reviewed how to set my mind. Um, I did all of the practice questions and then when I finished them and, I, and it wasn't like straight whenever I had a free moment and I looked at my calendar like in the beginning like at, at the end of last week the beginning of this week and I made sure to wherever there was a gap I put in study ASWB so that I it would like pop up also so it's like a second reminder and um, then I went back to um, any of the study groups that had um, the acronym and the reasoning, reasoning questions and I went through and practiced those. I bought a whiteboard so that it would mimic exactly how the test would be and I used that. Um, I, I can't have fluorescent lighting. I had to bring my own lamp, which is one of my accommodations. I made sure to use that. I borrowed my daughter's desk, put it in my room. And so I, I tried to mimic the environment as best as I could um, and exactly mimic the experience. That was extremely helpful. And that was Phil's suggestion. Um, and then when I finished all of the, the study groups that I attended, the acronym and the reasoning questions, I went to all his YouTubes, whatever I can figure out and find on the acronym and the, and the breaking down questions. And I did those. Um, and I found that to be enormously helpful. And then any content that I was weak on, I then went back to Phil's notes or YouTube video and I refreshed on that. I was a little obsessive the last week, but it was worth it. And if you could give someone one piece of motivation or advice that is getting ready to take their exam or they're not feeling as confident in themselves or they failed it and they're not sure where to start, what would you tell them? Like you said to me, meet yourself where you're at, make a plan, do it step by step. Uh, be diligent, make sure that you're planning how to get your mindset, how to mimic the environment so that you're prepared. And then I think one of the major pieces of advice that you gave me, because I had a lot of hurdles, even till the last minute, as you very well know, and I'm not going to get into the details. Um, you said, even if the make sure that you can focus on the questions and all of your tools, even if the roof is falling in at the study center. And I literally kept visualizing the roof falling in and my still taking the test. <laughs> and it worked, it worked. So, uh, and even when I had every hurdle, like literally down to the wire, as you know, um, every, and, and you kept reminding me, which was helpful too, but, um, Every hurdle, I kept thinking of that analogy or that metaphor that you said about the roof falling in and just saying, okay, this happened, but it's not going to divert me. I'm going to keep my focus. I'm going to keep doing it. Um, and even the questions that I didn't know, I kept hearing your voice in my head and I went through the process. So even if I didn't know the answers, I let the process dictate my answer, if that makes sense. Amazing. And I appreciate you coming back. And from the bottom of my heart, I'm so proud of you. Um, I'm so grateful. I'm better for you reaching out and f I'm better for walking through the process with you. Thank you so much, Bill. Like you are, uh, you are just an incredible person. You're an incredible teacher. You're very gifted at what you do. I could not have done this without you. Um, because I wasn't able to study on my own. I'm not able to do that kind of intensive reading and, and, and looking. I have I, from, the, from the brain injury, I have scanning and tracking issues as well as the dyslexia, which complicates both. And, and had I not had you and your sister, 
them, I would be in trouble and I don't think I would have passed, but because you get these YouTube videos, which everything's being read aloud and you break up the questions, you taught me how to do that. It helped scan it for me. Um, all of these things really was what I needed and um, I can't thank you enough. You were incredibly generous to serve and pay back and, and give back in any way I can. And likewise, if I can help in any way, just let me know and I'll try my absolute best. Thank you. And hopefully that was helpful for everybody. Trust me, like this is this isn't me just like getting hype and motivating people online. This is like actually changing people. Um, so take what you can and never give up on yourself and know that if you have a dream and a goal, it's always accomplishable. I studied each week with Phil. His explanations and breaking down questions really help. I found myself recalling his voice as I answered questions during the exam. I got extra time because I failed the first time and didn't feel I had enough time. And accommodation helps. A lot of Freud, mandated reporting, community organizing, and policy. One to two substance and three diagnosis, three meds. Once I found myself getting more correct answers to Phil's group, I felt ready. So Phil, oh my gosh, you helped me so much. I don't know where to start. Did you tell your mom I passed? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Um, Good. <laughs> so walk them through the process. Like what... What was your first exam like and what was different now that you were rocking with me for it? All right. So um, I, I ended up failing the exam. Um, I think it took it, what was it? Total like three times. Um, passed it the fourth time. Or No, wait. I took it twice and then passed it the third time. And um, this is the New York. So I'm, in, I'm based in New York. And it was really, really hard for me. I have to say, like, when I was taking the exams, like, before even knowing about you, um, it's like, I not, it's not just like memory, because I have like ADHD too. And I was the first exam, I had like 20 points left, like 20 questions left. And I ended up um, like rushing through and I failed it. So um, I felt like I had to accept the fact that I needed more time because I have ADHD. So um, I accepted that. I realized it after um, having discussions with you and I decided to um, apply for the accommodation. But just like I, I, I kept taking the exam without an accommodation in hopes that I would just like get through it and, you know, I wouldn't need it because I was fearful of the whole hassle of dealing with having to get it approved but it wasn't a hard process you know it was approved um so once there's proof that you have medication you were prescribed meds and you have someone sign it you know a psychiatrist then you're perfectly fine so um that happened and then i was able to study more with you of course um every week intensively i have a son who has autism i don't know if i ever disclosed this to you but um he's six and it was really hard and i have two other kids and i'm a single mom of three basically and i work full time um so it, it was hard but it, uh, to like time manage i i just really had to focus on that like okay this is the times i have i have sundays you know, I'll dedicate Saturday afternoons to them. The rest of the time, it's like studying, you know? Um, going through every question, you really helped me break it down. That to the point, like Lisa said, I can hear your voice during the exam. I can hear you telling me, okay, this is this. This is this type of question. Like, and, and I could see it like highlighting because <laughs> I'm a visual learner. <laughs> So I could see you like highlighting it and I'm like, yellow, okay, this, all right, this is it, this is it. And then I'm like, I got the question and then what things I wasn't like sure of, I would flag it. And then I, with that extra time, it, I used it all up, literally had like probably five minutes left. And it's because um, also the second time I took the exam that I failed, I kept going to the bathroom and I went to the bathroom like 10 times and that didn't leave me with enough time either. This time I had the, the time to use the bathroom and I had the time to like go back to the 
flag questions and like really um you know answer it again and this way i wasn't so nervous when i went back to these questions a few of them i had to change because i'm like crystal what are you doing this is obvious it's not that <laughs> so i had to like change it but i i don't recommend like changing your answer unless it's like right it smack you in the face like you know the answer is this why are you putting c if you know it's b you know that and then um i had again a lot of um policy and um community organizing questions um not not much substance use but i'm i'm happy that i i was able to study it because like i come from a family of substance use and um that was something that was like a trigger for me that i always tried to avoid studying and i know i, I mentioned that to you so um that really helped your your substance is like top of the line because um they had three questions on there about substance and i knew it immediately like right away i didn't have to second guess it was like right obviously right there you know so that and then uh like the meds a lot of the meds were on there and so like studying the meds helped me a lot too that um you had the meds in the dsm um study session that was really helpful and then a lot of like freud and behavioral stuff which um it was kind of it was easier as i got along for me um initially it was not like that was like the hardest part for me and the whole policy but after like taking um study groups with you and then doing like the private tutoring i i really was able to learn how to break down the question figure out what they want you know the answer that they want it's never really the answer that we want it's like what they want you to do and how they feel you're supposed to do it you know so it's like it, it's not what what you think or what you would really do in practice or what you assume you would want to do in practice it's more or less of like how they feel you should operate and um a lot of mandate reporting were like questions were on there and um yeah so just like following your um study groups doing the private session i did studying with you for like 2 months right so so like we studied for 2 months and um it was really really helpful but i studied a month on my own so oh, somebody came to you and said i failed my exam or i'm not really sure if i'm going to pass the exam what would you say to motivate them or piece of advice that you would have wanted to hear prior to walking into your exam or prior to preparing for this preparation that you passed Oh my gosh, Steve. I I felt that in 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 like halfway through my questions, I was like on question 78 and I was like I don't know if I'm getting this all right. Oh my gosh, and then I remembered you had said like you know, if you fail then you take it again. You know, like you this is what you want. If this is what you want, you got to keep trying. And I remember you saying like like if you fail, you fail. If you pass then yay. What's the worst that can happen? So I remember that and I was like that's it. What's the worst that can happen if I fail? So what? You failed already a few times. You're you're going to get it right at some point. So I was like I'm not going to think negative, you know? So my whole thing is like even though though like you have like one side of you that's like yeah, 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 you're going to fail. You you might fail. You're not getting these questions right. Like like oh, um you you might have gotten the last 10. Like don't count. Remember you said don't count what you're getting wrong. So sometimes that happens automatically and you're like, "Oh, I probably got those last three wrong." Like, don't do that. I know it happens, but let's say it does happen. My advice would be like, "So what? Like, I'm I'm going to get the rest of this right." <laughs> like find another way to like CBT yourself. <laughs> so it's like uh, kind of challenging all the negativity or even anxiety that you were having of like, "Wow, you're not doing this right." And it's like, "Well, I must have done it somewhat right or done what I plan yep. to do and that's going to be enough to be able to get Yeah, to and it. even if it's not then who cares because I just studied like half of my life away and then, you know, I can study the rest. <laughs> would there be any other piece of advice that you would want to give somebody? Um 
the uh, time manage, right? So try to like figure out a schedule where you can study, whether it's like three days a week or five. But I, I, I recommend studying as much as possible because like when I saw that, I, I at the end, like there was a part of me that was like, maybe you failed. And when I saw that pass, I had to like look at it again. And then when I saw it again, that's when I started crying. And I remember the woman was like, good news or bad news? And I was like, there's no one that wanted this more than me. Because like, I really, really like stopped caring for my kids. Like I sent them with my mom, you know, like I didn't see my kids for a while. And I had that, I had that help luckily to be able to study it. But everything happens for a reason. So, and that's what I want everyone to know that, you know, you're going through this now and there's, there's a purpose. There's a reason why you're studying and you're and you're failing. There's something you're missing that you need to get because there's a client out there who needs that that service and you're gonna be able to provide it, whether it be substance use and you're not as proficient than another social worker, but you're gonna get it and you're gonna be you're gonna be there to help that client or whether it's someone with special needs, you know, and you're gonna you're gonna learn it so much that you're gonna be able to help others. And also, um, like for me, I feel like I kept failing because um, my daughter, another thing, not, not I didn't fail because of her, but because like my oldest now, she's going to college and now she's going to take up social work. She was there watching me study my butt off and she was helping me with questions and she was reading it and she was getting questions right. And she took an interest. So now she will major in and get her bachelor's and master's in the accelerated um, social work program. So like, that's, this is why I want people to know that um, no matter what it is you have going on right now in your life, just make time for what you really, really want. And when you make time for this, put in the effort, put in the time, study with Phil, do as many sessions as possible, even if you need to take it again. I, I did your videos three times. So we, we hung up and I, I went back to those videos every time you sent it. And I did it like another two two three times each one the dsm5 everything just to make sure that i i you know retain the information and then um you know and that really helped too like when you send those videos again it's good to go over them the recorded sessions um so yeah i i that's what i would say yeah and thank you so much for being willing to come back and share and empower and motivate people from the bottom of my heart, I really, really appreciate it. And if you need anything, just Phil, let me know. I'm willing Phil, to help. Phil, I just put I my I just put my C application in. What's up? I'm going next. <laughs> I got it. I got to link up with you again. <laughs> I'm not stopping here. I'm telling you. <laughs> so it's lock and load time then. <laughs> That's right. I was like, I gotta do it. I gotta do it all in one shot. It's all or nothing. <laughs> But thank you, Phil, for everything. I appreciate you so much. You're here to help people. You went through something. You saw you needed to do this. You have a gift, and you're out here helping us, you know, gift everyone else, you know? So I appreciate you. It's my pleasure to be able to help. And something, and something that, as she was talking, that came to my mind is that the actions that you do, you don't know the results of what those actions are going to be or who's watching those actions. Because a lot of times we think it's all about us and all these things that, man, if I do this, no one else is going to be impacted. But she just said that I was grinding. I didn't successfully do it the first couple of times, but now my daughter saw me grind and not get what I wanted the first time around. So now she knows that things aren't going to come easy. And if she doesn't get it the first or second or the third or the fourth or the fifth or the sixth time, that's normal and that's okay. But as long as you have a dream and a goal and you put in the work, you are going to get everything that you want to. It may not be on your timeline, but it is going to be on time 100% of the time. And you're getting the skills and gifts and talents and things that you need in order to prepare you for whatever you want to do in your life. And that, that's amazing to me that even though she's like, man, I'm not really sure. She's like, no, I need to keep going and keep pushing and keep driving based on the fact that there are people that are watching me that I don't even know that are watching me or that are going to be impacted by whatever I'm going through right now, whether it's a future client, whether it's a future friend, whether it's a current friend, whether it's a current client, any of these things, people are going to benefit in some way, shape or form. So expanding your mind and being able to say, 
not why did this happen to me, but understanding what is this going to prepare me for and what can I gain from this experience in order to have experience? Because in order to have an experience into something, you must have experienced something at some capacity to be able to get you there. For real, if you ever have a dream or a goal or something that you need to do in your mind and other people aren't supporting you around you, just having that exposure and experience to say, this isn't something I'm willing to give up on. The people around me may have given up on it. People that I don't even know maybe have given up on it, or you feel that you're alone in the process, connecting yourself with people that are doing the exact same thing that you want to do. You are surrounded by 120 people right now that are hungry, just as hungry as you are to get to where you want to go and utilizing those resources, not to gain something from that person, but to supplement that situation in some way, shape or form, because the greatest thing that you can do is not to receive something. It's to give someone something, watch it grow. And in order to get you more fuel for your fire, so rather than trying to take someone else's fire, fan in their fire and getting warmth from that is going to be more important than is doing whatever you need to do. Hello, I'm Katrina and I passed on the first time I would like to share my experience. Hello. <laughs> Are you ready for me? Yeah. So tell okay, them who you cool. are and where you're at and what exam you took. I'm in Maryland. I took the master's uh, level social work exam. I actually sat for it in DC, but I still applied for the Maryland licensure. Let me see. I'm just looking at just to kind of, because I can get a little overwhelmed. Um, so I want to say that your your classes were really, really awesome. But before I get to that, I'll just tell you all the resources that I, that I used. Um, I did use the APCAR book, if I'm pronouncing that darn APCAR. So I read through that book. I also had the questions. I think it was the ASWB um, Masters of Social Work Premium soft application on my phone. And it's like 800 questions or 850 questions. And I went through those questions twice. Well, I started those questions in January and I think I didn't sit for my test until July, but I, I did it off and on. I just wasn't really committed to it. But every time like I was just sitting around I would, or on a plane going somewhere, I would pull up the questions and I would do a practice set of 10. And then what I would do is whenever I got something wrong, um, I would just, well, yeah, I would photo, take a snapshot of the picture of the question and then what the response was uh, or whatever they said, the commentary for it. And then I would do index cards. So I did a lot of index cards. So that really helped. Um, and then after reading the book from cover to cover, um, then I was kind of informed about you, Phil, which I didn't know about, which was like awesome because even though I had done those things and they were really good, especially the book, but I think from taking your classes really helped me to put some stuff in perspective because I just had a lot of information and I felt like the information was just like all over the place, but it wasn't really coming together. And your classes helped to pull it together and help, you know, because Otherwise, it was just a lot of information floating in my head, but it just gave formation to it, if that's the word. And I don't know if people are understanding what I'm saying, but it just made it make sense. Um, and you helped while we were, uh, while I was listening to your videos, videos and stuff, you just helped me to conceptualize things that I didn't at beforehand. And so that was really awesome too. Um, you gave me another way to look at how to retain some of the information, which some of it, like for instance, um, the medicines or um, even community stuff, the way you would give examples, even if I didn't use your example verbatim, it helped me to think of a way to apply some type of, um, mnemonic, if that's the word for it, to, to really remember um, that information. So that was 
that was great too. Um, what really, really helped too, because I ordered, gosh, my husband's here now. He knows, well, he doesn't really know. He still doesn't know, Phil, how much money I spent. But anyways, um, he, but anyways, I, I, I think I ordered the client interventions and the community um, interventions, uh, research, and the whole one day prep, which, which was really, really awesome because that covered a whole lot of stuff. And so I, I didn't get an opportunity just to share with everyone. I was able to sit through two classes, but because I wasn't going to be able to sit in the other classes because my test was coming up, I love the option to be able to purchase um, classes that had already occurred. And then that way I could do it at my pace and, um, and on my time, you know, not necessarily the time of the class. So that really, really helped. But they were really, really good. And the things that you shared, even when I was sitting in the training, was to really make sure that I kind of relaxed. I needed to relax. I needed to hear a lot of the things that was being said um, and that you said to help me to calm down a little bit, because even though I know you said, you know, it's okay, if you don't pass the test on the first time, you can just take it again. I had a job that I needed to take the test and pass. I needed to pass the test in order to, to get the job. I had been uh, given the job, but of course it was conditional. And I was like, no, failing is not an option. I hear you fail, but I have to pass this test. And so, but I think also um, what helped too is that you said this, and that really kind of helped me too. You had said something about the number of questions that you have on the test. And the fact that even though you, you me, I would want to get them all right, that's, that's not even realistic the fact that you have so many that you can miss. And so when you think about that, it's like, oh. So it's not, it, it wasn't as bad. I didn't put like as much pressure on myself to make sure that I'm covering, I, I purpose to cover as much material as I could, but in the same token, I didn't feel that pressure as much when you shared that. Um, and, and there was a, a couple of other things that you shared to really help me to not stress out so much because it's very important that you don't overstress because if you go in and you're too stressed or you're too wound up, you're not going to be able to think. And, um, and so I went in, I, I took the, okay, so let me tell you this. So this is, I thought was really good. Um, I had five weeks to really, really study because at first my test was pushed out till September, but then they, um, they opened up more testing centers, you know, COVID-19, and I was able to get in earlier, which is awesome because I really needed to get in earlier in order to make sure I could start work the first day that I'm a school social worker. So, um, but I had five weeks. So I just planned how I was gonna do everything um, from watching your tapes, and reviewing the material and getting through the book and I put myself on a schedule. I was able to do that because I wasn't working full time, but I know people who are working full time, it, it would be a little bit different, but it was COVID-19. So a lot of people weren't working. So I kind of just wanted to share just planning and organizing, well, mostly planning um, to get certain things covered by a certain time so that I can cover all the material that I wanted to cover before the test. Um, but yeah, being calm and relaxed because, oh, and I took the pre-test too. Um, and that was really helpful as well. The um, preliminary, you know, the, the exam test that you can take for the test, if that makes any sense. <laughs> It was the ASWB exam that you took on yes. the ASWB website. Yes, exactly. I, I highly recommend it. So let's say you had somebody in front of you that was like, yo, it's my first time. I'm getting ready. I need to take this and pass it for my job. I'm so worried. I'm so anxious. What are some words of encouragement that you tell that person? Oh, just 
you you can't like so i didn't i was a part of um this website and i would see sometimes some negative stuff and i just didn't want to feed off of any negativity like i just continued to sit, tell myself positive things and that i'm going to pass the test and that and i saw you know the paper already passed with my name on it and my picture just in my mind i just had to keep telling myself, just be positive, continue to encourage yourself. Don't let yourself to get, you know, get overstressed. If you are a part of a website, you know, don't feed off of the, any negativity, but just be positive and speak positive affirmations to yourself. Um, because if you entertain negativity and you start to get nervous and you start to get too worried or, you know, you're just it's self-defeating and so you don't want to do that you want to speak life to yourself is the way i put it so that's what i encourage you to do as well all right awesome well from the bottom of my heart i appreciate you coming back and being willing to share because it is super duper motivating for me as well as other people to hear people that have gotten to the other side someone did ask um if i passed the 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 asw exam the first time and I did barely. I think I passed it by three questions. And I was panicking at first because I thought if I don't do this same thing when I take the test, then I could very well fail. But um, that didn't happen. So I'm grateful for that. <laughs> and yes, I put the answers on the back. Well, I just kind of put the information on the flashcards. And because I write, um, because for me, learning, I'm kind of kinesthetic, writing out the information, even though it was a whole box of index cards, really helped me to retain the information. And I use, like Mr. Phil does when he does workshops, he does the colors and all of that. I had markers with colors that highlighted different things, and it just really helped me to retain that information. Awesome. Well... If I can ever help in anything that you do, just let me know. Most definitely, because I'll be taking my clinicals in two years and <laughs> and I'll be looking you up again. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get started on that in about a, six more months studying. But thank you. Thank you for what you do. I don't know how you do it and work a full-time job and do these sessions, but I'm really grateful for your commitment to helping others to, to be successful. I mean, it's commendable and we love you for it. I know I do because you were a godsend. So I'm thankful for what you do and keep up the good work. <laughs> it's my pleasure to be able to help and it's support like yours that keeps me going and I wouldn't change anything. Awesome. Hello, I took the LCSW test in 1995 and I thought I passed it. Then in 2020, I was told I didn't pass the test and I needed to take it to get another license. It was a long process, but I made it and passed in August. Thanks to Phil and his process. Thanks for everything, Phil. Well, I wanted to come on today mainly just to support Phil. Um, I took this exam in 1994 and um, before I took it, I went to a study class. It was very different in those days. You know, they kind of moved you into a room. 50 to 100 people sat in there. They gave you, a, you could take two number two sharp pencils. You sat at a desk next to someone else and you took your test. And then when you were done, you turned it in. And then you had to wait six weeks to find out your answer. And then they didn't give you the answer. They sent it to your state that you applied for the license for. And then your state let you know if you passed or not. So I went to a study group and I had to drive three hours to get to a study group. And they didn't say one thing about the test. The whole thing was test taking skills. And at the end of the test taking skills, they said, oh, and by the way, more lawyers pass this test than social workers. And I was pissed. And I said, something's wrong with the test that more lawyers could pass it. So I went in and I took the first test and I missed it by one point. So I rallied again. And then, you know, they made you wait. You had to wait 
um, 90 days before you could apply for a test again. And then you applied and then you waited till you got on a roster and they didn't offer a test all the time. They offered so many tests a year and that was it. And so I got on a second test. I went, my state said I passed it. And so I got my um, LISW. Uh, that was in New Mexico. So I practiced um, all over and I moved to Minnesota and I wanted to get a license and I went to get the license and they said, oh yeah, you got to put your test exam. And so they said, you have to go to the testing center. They'll send us. So I went to the testing center and they said, oh yeah, you didn't pass that test. And I said, what do you mean? I didn't pass that test. And they go, yeah, you missed it by a point. And I go, no, I said, I took that test twice. And the first one I pa I didn't pass and the second one. I didn't, they go, no, we don't have you down as ever passing. And I said, well, I, I want to refute that. I want to question that. And I said, because I could have never gotten my license in my state if I didn't pass it. And they go, no, computers don't lie. And that's your score. And um, you'll have to take it again if you want a passing score. So needless to say, I'm, I'm 61 years old and I was pissed. And I, so I got, I got a big attitude, super big attitude about having to take that test again. And so um, I bought the, man, the book, you know, I don't know, $90 for the manual or whatever it is. I looked at it and I was just, I was still pissed. And so I really, I didn't study that much. I thought, you know, I, I, I'm sure I know all this information. I've been a social worker for over 40 years. I've been practicing. Since 1979, I've been practicing. And I thought, you know, okay, I have to take this test. I wrapped around that I had to take it. It was uh, about 10 days before my test. I just happened to flip through YouTube and there was Phil. Oh man, you saved me, Phil. So I watched a YouTube session and I saw him break down five questions. And I went through that and I saw how that process worked and I thought, ah, oh, this is a godsend. This is put right here in front of me, Phil, to help me. Because I really felt like what I was missing was a method. It wasn't that I didn't know the information. Somehow I figured I had to, most of it had to be in here. I didn't have a method. Because just like the young woman said earlier, it's not about how you would do it as a social worker. These questions aren't based on how we would probably go in there and, and practice. They're based on a standard and you really need a technique to, to break them down and then be able to refer your answer back to narrow them. And so I saw this YouTube and I thought, oh, I got to have that. That's it. This is it. This is the process I've been looking for. So I sent um, Phil an email. And he didn't get back to me because I'm kind of like jonesing, right? I just have a few days before my test is the next week. He gets back to me a couple of days later and he goes, oh yeah, I've been on vacation. Sorry, it took me a minute to get back to you. And I said, oh, Phil, I said, I see you have a, a sign up for a whole day. It was like a, a six and a half hour workshop. I said, I really want to get in that. And he goes, yeah, I'm full. No, you can't be full. Yeah that's full. I go, Oh man. And he goes, but he says, you know, you could pay for last month's and he goes, and it's a recording and you can get that. And I go, okay, I got, I want that. So I didn't get the testing material from him until like on a Sunday. And my test was that next week on a Thursday. So I got it and I chunked it up and I did two and a half hours a day of it. And I, I just worked the process that you gave me and then um, the day, and I didn't stress over it. I didn't just cram. I just did your process, two and a half hours, two and a half hours. And then the last on the third day, I went in the morning of the test and I did a self-hypnosis technique. And it's an incredible technique. And it's, I learned it a long time ago. Nobody even knows this goofy little technique, but it works so well. And you, you actually roll your eyes backwards up in your head and for like 20 seconds, you hold that movement and it pushes on a nerve that goes directly into your brain. And you say your positive message that you're saying to yourself. And my positive message was, I have total recall. And I said that to myself, I have total recall. I have total recall. 
I have total recall. So then, honestly, with COVID, I had to buzz into this building. I got to the top. I had to wash my hands. I had to have, of course, a mask. I got buzzed into another room. I got scanned. I had to lock my phone in a zip bag, and put all that stuff away. Then they palm printed me twice. And then they asked me all these questions. Of course, I had to give them an ID. I went through all of that. And then I walked just through a door and they wanted me to do it again. And I'm like, I just did that. And they go, yeah, well, this is a different process. This is a different room. So I had to do all the, I had to give them my ID again. I had to do the hand printing again. Um, I got through that. I got in there and um, I just applied your principles, Phil. And every time I just took it back, I just worked the process that you gave me, the acronyms that you gave me. And when I had a little dicey moment, I went to, I have total recall. I have total recall. And I took every second in that test. I took it right up to the four hours. I mean, I took every minute they, they possibly gave me. And when I got it back, I had a pass on it. And I know it was because you really supported me with the method that I really needed, Phil. And my advice to people is that's the biggest piece. The information, yes, we need to know that information, but you have to have a method to apply it. And that's just the ace in the hole for me, that, that method that you give us, Phil. And I just, I'm so grateful and thankful, and I really appreciate you. And I'm so glad that you figured that out. I wish that if this is what you want to be doing, that this is what you could do and make a living off of it because you're passionate about it and you're awesome. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be able to help. And thank you for coming back. And when you told me your story, I was blown away. I was like, the testing center said that you did not pass it. Like that's mind blowing that if you would have never left the state that you were practicing, you would have never known that you'd quote unquote, no. didn't pass the first exam. That is no. mind numbing to me. Yeah. So, well, you hear stories from other women. I mean, we heard another woman who just shared that, you know, she, she didn't pass it several times or something. There was a conflict in one of her tests too. And it happens. It happens to us. The first woman that shared, shared some things that happened to her. So yeah, it happens. And um, you're just a really motivational too, Phil. I love your energy and everything you're about. And Keep it up, buddy. Thank you. And if you ever need anything, just let me know and I'll try my best to help out. You got it. All right. Take care of yourself. Thanks. Bye. Beverly from Pennsylvania. I took the LCSW exam on August 10th and passed it. It was my second time taking the exam and found that Phil's process was extremely helpful and is what helped me pass. So glad I'm able to um, come on and talk and uh, share my experience with everyone. Um, so I just, I just have to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Phil. You completely, really helped me be able to pass the exam. Um, th it was my second time passing it. So I had, um, I had taken it the beginning of uh, February. I took it February 6th. Um, it was a, a, like a month and a couple days after my first daughter was born. And so it was like, I was literally falling asleep during the exam. It was really poor timing, but I just was so, you know, I had it scheduled prior to her birth and I just was like, oh, I know this, I know the material, like I'm just gonna do it. And I just, I was so confident going into it. But the funny thing is I had no process, no process at all. <laughs> and so my, my clinical supervisor had actually um, given me your name and um, had, had shared with me one of your videos and I had watched a couple of them, but um, I didn't, you know, I was, you know, a new, new mom. So I wasn't really putting a lot of time, as much time as I should have been into studying, um, just to be completely honest. And, um, you know, so I took that exam. I felt really confident actually the whole time I was taking it and I saw that fail and it was like, whoa, <laughs> what is this? But, you know, reflecting on it afterwards, I knew I, I didn't have a process. I didn't follow um, any type of method and, and that was why. And so, you know, I, I um, my exam got rescheduled and then pushed back quite a bit because of COVID, um, and, and which was good. I, I needed the extra time to study, um, and then I took it again in August. So your process was completely what helped me to pass. I, um, you helped to break down. The acronym was really helpful for me. That was one of the big things um, that helped me. 
and just kind of the clarity that you provided because the first time I went into it I had you know knew of the the two different acronyms kind of using the first most or um, first next and then the best most and I was so confused that I didn't know what to use and you know you're explaining that really helped um, and so I just stuck with that the one acronym you suggested um, and the practice questions were invaluable um, really in just being able to break down the questions um, so I, I also took your one day study course um, and the study course materials that you sent, I poured over those. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I, I read over them, made, you know, other like flashcards based on that. Um, and just on the way to the exam, I was listening to, to the recording, the, the um, recording you sent of the one day study um, course. I just, I listened to that. I don't know, probably 10 times or more, and then was listening to it on the way to the exam. Um, just really trying to get some of that, um, the content in, you know, some of the things that could possibly be on there and just um, understanding the process more. Um, one of the other things I had done was um, two weeks prior, I took the, the ASD, ASWB practice exam and I was, <laughs> The funny thing is, I was confident with that too. And I was like, I know this, I'm using the techniques. And it, I failed it. <laughs> Two weeks prior to my exam, I failed it. And I was like, what is happening? So I buckled down, I went back through every single <laughs> video that, that you have on YouTube, <laughs> providing uh, practice questions um, and just listened to them, did them on my own. Um, and and really that that was what helped me. You know, I, I had friends that said, oh, you know, make make, make note cards. Uh, you know, I had I had also purchased the the um, the Afgar um, study LCSW study book um, and all of that. But I'm I'm an auditory learner, and so I had to stick with what worked for me. And listening to your videos was what worked for me. And and every time I ve like deviated from that and would would think, oh, you know my friend told me I need to like make note cards and it worked for her and she passed. Like it, it just, I, I just knew I was wasting my time. <laughs> and so I would come back to, you know, the, the content and the information that you provided and, um, and I passed like, it was, oh, the, the feeling was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And I, you know, the first time I, I, I failed with, I think I like nine points, I, I missed it by. And then, um, it was like, I think 12 or 13 points I passed by the, the next time. So it was, it was just like even more than, than I could, um, even have hoped for. So, um, yeah, you were a godsend and I just, I appreciate all that you do. I appreciate, you know, the motivation. Um, you're, you're so motivational in, uh, your videos and, um, that's what, you know, that's what we need in this time. So I just want to thank you so much for all that, that you provide to us. And it's my pleasure to be able to help and being able to identify that learning style is super duper important. And I feel like is the most under discussed thing besides the mental aspect of the exam. But most people are trying to teach themselves in a way that they're not open to learning or their mind isn't programmed that way. So if you were interacting with somebody and they were like, yo, I have this book that every single person recommends for me to get because it's the overarching thing that's going to help you pass and they're not understanding it what would you say to them i would just say you know along those lines like follow what follow what works for you um you know so many people will will give information about you know this is how they pass um you know and and kind of try to maybe steer you in that direction but um but follow kind of the the learning style that's going to be best for you um and then keep keep surrounded by motivation um even just the motivational part is helpful in those times when you know i started to question myself um and question even in the exam itself your your words were running through my mind <laughs> you know i could almost hear you in my head <laughs> as I was going through and, and taking the exam and, and how you broke down the questions. That was the most important part because, you know, you know, working in the field, like as much as, you know, the, the books were helpful with some content knowledge, it was breaking down the questions that, that 
uh, messed me up the first time and that I didn't have because I didn't have a process. And so being able to follow that was was the biggest thing. And so um, that's one of my that would definitely be one of my um, my advice is just, you know, just say follow a process um, and break, you know, really focus on breaking down the questions and, and keep yourself surrounded by motivation. <laughs> Well, awesome. I appreciate you being willing to come back and share your experience from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate it. And if you ever need anything, just let me know. I'll try my best to help in any way that I can. Awesome. Thank you so much, Phil. It is my pleasure.